Uh, my name is Maria Lundesjö and I work at X Foundation, which is an independent non-profit organization that is working practically to accelerate solutions for a sustainable work. Uh, we're really trying to create products that uh, make concrete change. Uh, so we call ourselves a do tank rather than a think tank. And we strongly believe in business as a driving force for change. And we often run initiatives in close collaboration with the businesses. So Tozar Grill Farms is located uh, 30 kilometers north from Stockholm, and it's our test farm and development center. Uh, our ambition with Tozar is to be a catalyst that contribute to the development of the sustainable future in Swedish production uh, regarding innovation, knowledge sharing, product development, and consumption of sustainable food. Two shocker both have fields, forests, meadows, gardens, and a restaurant kitchen, which is, gives us the ability to grow, raise, breed, and develop new methods, new food products, and new meals together with others. We think that merging different skills is necessary to make tomorrow products both better and tastier. We want Two Shocker to be the place where sustainability, nutritional content, and taste overlap and amplify each other. Our projects are always uh, based on a practical sustainability ch challenge and we, oh sorry, and we um, uh, gather stakeholders from across the food chain. So we gather primary producers, researchers, food processors, chefs and entrepreneurs, uh, and we want them to come together in our projects uh, to try to find solutions to complex uh, problems. This is not very common, at least not in Sweden, that you do this kind of gathering from the whole chain. So uh, we really like this as a working model. So I'm going to shortly describe the way from pulses to products, starting uh, with uh, the research. Uh, if we should stay uh, within the planetary boundaries and contribute to better public health, how can we do that? We wanted to find a way to get the consumers to eat less meat and uh, more legumes. So what new product would yield the largest uh, climate effect? Well, uh, uh, in Sweden, we really, really love uh, minced meat. So if we could find a way to change uh, uh, the behavior in eating minced meat, we would gain a large uh, climate effect. Um, we also needed to find a way to replace the mincemeat in a good way and uh, get a bit better uh, um, uh, use of that. So what protein crops would uh, replace that but still find the same purpose? So how could we increase Swedish legume cultivation and replace the imported meat uh, that is mainly used for mincemeat? If, if we reduced our meat consumption by 50%, we would still uh, have enough domestic uh, production of meat. So it would not really affect the Swedish farmers, the meat producers of Sweden. So why did we choose the legumes? Well, it is because uh, we have found out that the Swedish family with children has an average of 11 favorite uh, dishes that they cook over and over again. Uh, and several of them contain minced meat, so it would be a good uh, thing. And many people want to eat a locally produced, nutritious, unprocessed and plant-based food, but they don't have time to soak and cook the legumes. So we must, uh, must make it easy for them to, make, to do the right thing. And uh, it's also very hard to change consumer behavior, so we really need to find a way to change their behavior without, without them really uh, knowing, them, knowing that. So, in practice, we started with uh, uh, gathering the researchers and farmers and food processors uh, and we wanted to identify the crops that we wanted to use. We decided to grow sweet lupin because it was most similar to soy uh, and grey pea because it was grown on a large scale in Sweden. Uh, and it's, it's been a very uh, important uh, crop a uh, long time ago, but it's kind of disappeared, but it's really very tasty. 
Uh, and we also choose broad bean because it was already grown but, but for uh, animal feed. Then we started uh, combining these uh, three and uh, mincing them in different ways and also combining them with the press residues from the production of cold press uh, rapeseed oil. Uh, and then we started to try to make a combination of this and find a way of making product that uh, seemed to be like minced meat. And uh, the best uh, way is to find a proof of concept. So one day we made a lasagna and served it to the head of operations for uh, one of Sweden's largest wholesalers. And they couldn't really tell that it was actually not meat they were served. So then we thought that this could be something, uh, we could be something on, on the track here. Uh, to get it on the market, we started to work with a small delicatessen chain at that started to use it in small scale. And then we also uh, took it to uh, school kitchens because uh, they have a we have a tradition of uh, uh, using them as a test bed. So for us, it was a really good uh, way to get the, it uh, upscaling of the, of the product. And then six months later, we were confident enough to turn into Swedish largest school wholesaler. Uh, and uh, they are actually launching the product in their uh, ordinary assortment um, this autumn. So it's been a long way from, uh, uh, for the whole production chain, but it was still uh, quite quick since we gather all the stakeholders around the same table. So if you have uh, questions or uh, want to know more about our projects, I would recommend you to visit our homepage, accommodation.se. Thank you.